Hi, this is Brent. Welcome back to Theoretically Practical. We're on uh, round two of putting together the Defender engine. So we're going to start and focus on this side of the engine because there's not actually that much left. And, and now that I've looked at it long enough and stared at it and, you know, stroked the beard with filthy hands, um, I know where everything goes. So we're going to start there. We're going to put the motor mount on here. Then we can put the uh, fuel injector pump here or the diesel injection pump here. Um, then we can put the, swap the valve covers, then we're going to install the, uh, they call it the cyclone vent. It just spins around, dumps oil back into the crankcase, whatever, and then puts it into your, uh, intake, except, uh, on the intake side of things, I am thinking that I might put this to a catch can. I'm not quite sure. I'll probably just put it to the intake for now and... At some point, I think replacing this whole unit with uh, Allisport makes a nice thing for this that also involves a catch can, so you're not running as much uh, used motor oil through your turbo. I don't know. We're going to do it. So that's the plan. Um, I got some stuff I need to clean. I've got some uh, non-chlorinated brake cleaner that I'm going to use for some of this stuff. I've got the degreaser, the, the super clean degreaser that worked pretty good last time. I got some much stiffer bristle brushes. That's what I think my biggest problem was, is I was using a really soft bristle brush. It just doesn't have the, the oomph I needed. So that's where we're gonna get started. I figure once we get this side of the engine done, we'll come over and I'll talk about what goes on the other side of the engine. And um, yeah, and now actually I have ah, a lovely box from Rovers North. So, Let's see what I got. Apparently, I bought a lifetime supply of shredded uh, cardboard and newspaper. No. Uh, where is the stuff? Wow. Okay. I got the gasket set I needed. Now, this gasket set has a new valve cover gasket, which is great because I figured out the valve cover thing after well, anyways, it's great because I need one. Uh, it's got the intake exhaust gasket. It also has the gasket on the front for the thermostat mount that we were missing before, or at least it showed it in the picture. Um, yeah, so, huh. It's weird, sometimes when I order from uh, Rovers North, um, this says Eurospare. I, I, mean, I don't really care what the brand is. I thought it was getting Proline. Um, the, the, the official Land Rover brand stuff is like, I think this was like a $50 gasket kit and the official Land Rover one was like $180. So, uh, you know, and, and Rovers North has never sent me anything that I thought was junk. So I'm not, you know, upset about that or anything. I'm just, sometimes I get something it's not quite the same brand name that I thought they were advertising, but eh, whatever. And I got, I gotta seal it up good. So I got some, uh, Hylomar Universal Blue Gasket Sealant and some Land Rover Sealant Adhesive Pan Engine Sealant. So, this stuff looks pretty, um, pretty skookum. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, oh, that was it. I think it's kind of like Permatex Black, but um, it's Land Rover, and so it was more expensive and therefore better. But it's a Land Rover 5900 High Performance Black Sealant. Um, I don't know. I, I'm gonna try it. It, it looked. It wasn't very. Ex well, it was. A, it was like 20 bucks. I don't know. I needed some sealant, some black sealant, and and I was on the web page, and and this has Land Rover on it. So that's you know that's that's worth a lot right there. And the Hylomar Blue stuff, I've used this before. It works well. It doesn't uh, dissolve in gasoline or oil or anything, but it always stays tacky. It doesn't harden. So uh, I don't know if I'll use any of this today, but it's uh, pretty interesting stuff. And it's what is suggested by Land Rover, which, you know, it doesn't really matter, but <sighs> I got it. I'm going to use it. So yeah, that, that huge box full of cardboard, and then this is what was in it. Now, the fuel injection pump here, and... Um, so I didn't get it rebuilt because it's got all this yellow paint on it, which to me says that somebody's been through and, and probably possibly professionally adjusted it. I don't know. Um, we are going to be, you know, fiddling with this later, maybe turn it up a little bit because, you know, why not? But that's way down the road. Um, certainly after I actually drive it for the first time, which 
I keep talking about like as a thing that's going to happen, but then not really moving towards the goal. Um, but I'm just going to douse this down with brake cleaner a little bit, you know, scrub it just a little bit. I don't want to get too aggressive with it. And, uh, and we'll slap that in. That's, oh no, we won't do that first. <sighs> Order of operations, man. Order of operations. First thing we're going to do is put the motor mount on because the injector pump mounts there and the motor mount mounts there. So I'm a, I'm a very lazy man, so we're going to do it in the easiest order first. Motor mounts in the pan, ready to get cleaned up. Um, and uh, yeah. Know what they say, there ain't nothing to it but to do it. So so one thing I would say is just if you're, if you're cleaning part stuff, uh, if you do a lot of welding, go for the non-chlorinated brake cleaner. Uh, I know that I'm not welding on this, so I could use chlorinated brake cleaner. Maybe it works better, but... Um, I do enough welding that I don't want to be able to grab anything that can make phosgene gas, thank you Elkvis, uh, and kill me. So, so I use the non-chlorinated stuff so if I ever grab it by accident, I'm not, you know, gonna be a statistic. I also wear glasses when I'm doing this because, you know, none of this stuff is made out of eye drops. Uh, so anyways, we'll get this cleaned up real quick. Slap this on. Then go to the injector, slap that bad boy on. I've got all new uh, crush washers. You know, one thing that's important on the injectors and, and anything with like a banjo fitting is um, you really wanna replace all your copper uh, gaskets, washers. They're sort of doing double duty, uh, if at all possible. But if you don't have the opportunity to do that, if you, if for some reason, you know, you're, you gotta get the vehicle back on the road. You forgot to order the parts. I, I don't care, whatever, it happens to all of us. Um, what you should do is get a glass of water handy and a plumber's torch, and you can just heat that uh, washer, the copper washer up till it glows a dull red. Drop it right in the water. Uh, copper tends to work harden, so every time you crush it, it actually gets harder. By doing that, you're, you're gonna soften it up. I know with steel, if you dumped it in the water, it would get harder, but uh, copper's, uh, I think it's called a single phase metal. And in the case of that, it actually softens. So uh, I, I did a little silversmithing once upon a time as well. And um, when you're silversmithing, um, oh, that was a good, uh, that was a good lock washer. Uh, when you're silversmithing, uh, you have to occasionally heat up your piece and quench it. And that's how you keep it soft. Because as you hammer, it gets harder and harder and eventually get brittle and, and crack. And that's the thing that'll happen with these uh, copper washers. If you use them over and over and over again without annealing them, they will um, they'll just get brittle on you. Oh, and uh, you know, never never put your gloves on till it's, till it's way too late to do you any good. So uh, I don't really like the way my skin feels after getting all brake cleanered up and I'm almost positive I'm not supposed to. So, Wah. ready for your exam? Uh, well, anyways, we'll take the easy route. Still feels real slick. I thought I was gonna get away with a quick spray with the uh, parts cleaner and, and, and uh, or the brake cleaner and move on with my life, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. So we're gonna go super clean. Boo! I think the spray stuff works better, but I also think it's because you spray it on and it foams up. And, and if it makes foam, it's, it's definitely working better than anything that doesn't foam, right? It's not just psychosomatic. So. Well, now that I'm down here bent over, it does occur to me that I have a big ass table that I could put this up on, but. <sighs> nope, too late. Uh, one thing I did is uh, just because there was no paint on that motor mount, I don't want it to corrode. I sprayed Protect on it. I have, I don't know where I got this from. Uh, it's, just, it's just like Cosmoline or Fluid Film or anything. It's going to do what it's going to do. So um, since these are motor mounts, I'm going to use the, some Threadlocker on it. I'm using Threadlocker Blue 
don't use permanent thread locker on anything you don't want to be permanent unless you can take a torch to it. Uh, if you can take a torch to it and heat it up cherry red, it'll come apart. But uh, permanent thread locker, it's not, uh, it's not just advertising hype. It's, uh, it is very real. So, um, so I know it mounts here, but just in case, if I didn't know, I don't know if you can see, but there's a good witness mark of an oval thing right there. Uh, and there's an oval boss on the side of the motor, and this stuff is just absolutely sticky. I gotta get the maximum amount of filth on here. I'm just not, I'm just not happy, right? So, I, I do really like this thread locker that's, uh, the gel type. It looks like a, like a lip balm container. But, uh, it just goes on just cleaner. I don't know. I'm not a sponsor, for sure. Um, they can be. I've, whoever... I don't even care what brand it is. Also, why does Permatex and every other brand have a different color for each type of thread locker and the colors don't match between brand? I don't, uh, that's, that's a, an annoyance for me. So, I don't know, oh, you can't see it in the screen, but I'm using this socket kit, uh, it's uh, Gray pneumatic, like 81 piece master 3 8 drive socket set. Uh, I got it because I like blow molded cases because that lets me know exactly how many sockets I've lost, which is at least three at any given time. Um, but it also had short and long from like 5 16 to 1 inch in the equivalent metric sizes, and it has short, long, and wobble sockets in each size. So it seemed like a one-stop shop and uh, it was very, uh, it's very, I think it was like, I don't know, $300 kit or something like that. I don't know. The sockets aren't, I won't say they're the best sockets in the world or anything, but uh, they're pretty good. There's four of these rubber motor mounts. They're all the same. There's two for the engine and two for the I think one on the transmission and one on the transfer case, something like that. They're all the same. You don't have to worry about it. <sighs> this did have a lock washer on it, but the lock washer came off in two pieces, which kind of lets me know that it probably was worse than not having one at all. I'd rather just put some thread locker on it. More and more, I'm seeing that nobody's really using lock washers anymore. I, I don't... I'm not convinced they do you any good, and I've and I've taken enough things apart where they're broken in half, so if it vibrated, half of it could have escaped, and then you've got a gap, and I don't know. I'll probably put them on some things here and not put them on other things. There's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I, that's what you should really know. Uh, I just I just go after it, so. All right, we got our freshly, professionally cleaned octopus. Fuel injector, whatever. All right. Oh man. I've never seen the technique of zip tying all the nuts and bolts everywhere they go, but uh, it's way better than plastic bags. I'll tell you that. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Or better yet, I'd have somebody else do it for me in a heartbeat. There are a lot of bits and bobs on this, so I'm gonna go to like fast mode and just probably do the rest of this engine. If I try to talk and do this at the same time, eh, I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. You think I can talk and assemble an engine correctly? I definitely can do it wrong though, so. All right, so we basically got this side of the engine put back together again. Um, we're gonna look at a couple things. One, these bolts, these little banjo bolts here, they are definitely 7 16 and not metric. Uh, maybe because these are Bosch injectors or maybe because the queen decided that these would be a standard fastener. I don't know. But they're all rounded a little bit because they've all had metric fasteners punted onto them over the years. So, uh, you know, I don't know what to say about that. Other than WTF England, WTF. Um, this is on by so i never originally popped out the center but this is an adjustable uh cam but by matching up the witness marks i i should be good enough to get it started like i said we're gonna have to go through and really properly time this because i'll never 
I'll never believe that it's properly timed unless I'm the one that timed it. So we'll, uh, we'll figure it out together, I guess. Yeah, this is going pretty well. I know where at least most of the things go, so. All right, guys, I've been degreasing my way along and uh, making good progress until I got to this. This is the mount for the, partially for the alternator, and uh, the, the base of the alternator goes here and pivots off this, and then the, um, yeah, the uh, power steering pump mounts here and kind of is able to pivot off these three bolts. So that's all fine. You know, these are all good, except one of the mounting bolts, and I'm sure there's more than enough, but I mean, I'm in it this far. I'm in it to win it, right? Uh, one of the mounting bolts for it is broken off in there, and by the looks of it, it's been broken off in there for many, many years. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys my technique or some of my technique for fixing this. Uh, I'm gonna set this up and I'm gonna take my TIG welder and weld a little, little ball of weld on the top of there and maybe stack up a few times high till I can get at it with a pair of vice grips. Um, and the first time I do that, maybe the second, maybe even the third time I do that, I'm just gonna snap it off. It just, it just that's how it works. Uh, this, this is a technique shown to me by the old, uh, the older gentleman I work with who's a fantastic welder. Because every time you weld to this, you're heating it up and you're thermocycling it. And that just helps really loosen it up and, and put some real heat into that. You could also put a nut over top and MIG weld in the middle. Um, I don't have as much, I haven't had as much luck with that because the because it's hard to make sure that you're actually welding to the uh, to the surface down there. I, I also may build it up with the TIG put the uh, nut over the lump that I've generated and then weld it together so I don't have good penetration. So uh, I'm not gonna set up to show you guys me while I'm welding and I'm gonna move the camera away so I don't burn the lens for the, put a little spatter in the lens for the third time. So, um, but I'll come back after I've put a little TIG blob on this and I'll show you how this works out. So um, yeah, anyways, it's just a minor roadblock kind of thing you sort of expect in a 30 year old vehicle. Okay, we got that fixed. Um, as you can see, I won't pick them up with my fingers. Try number one, nope. Try number two, nope. Try number three, nope. Try number four, success. Uh, the technique works. I, I did went with the nut because I just couldn't, I couldn't find my good vice grips so these don't grip worth the shit. So um, I just kept welding uh, 916 nuts on there and then breaking them off with this and uh, you know the more you the more times you heat it up the the easier it gets and and there you go so yeah it worked the hole is uh you know perfectly fine for reuse I might if I get a junk bolt that size I might put a slit in the side of it and basically make like a bolt chaser out of it real quick because I've got some I've got a lot of spare bolts in that size range so uh, in fact, I think this is one of them, yeah. So I'll probably run a fastener up and down there a few times. I did I did catch the edge of the hole a tiny bit, which is somewhat to be expected. So, you know, I, I, obviously uh, all, all you need is, uh, you know, uh, a 250 amp TIG welder, an auto dark welding helmet, a $300 air tool, a $300 impact gun, and you know, all the various other stuff. It's, it's easy, anyone can do it. No, but you could do the same thing I did with the same success with, uh, you know, the Harbor Freight MIG gun that's only flux core. I, I wouldn't, but you could. Make friends with someone with a welder if you can't have one, right? That's, that's the name of the game. And then do something for them that they can't do. I mean, you know, yeah. So I'm gonna put that aside and start getting back to it. I, I hope I have the bolt for this, but my hardware store has got a good selection of metric bolts, so we should be golden. Okay, so now we're actually back and ready to start working on this side of it. Um, I just had a lot more stuff to clean than I thought I did. I cleaned out this again a couple of times because there was some crusties on the inside and uh, I'd hate to put chunks through my new engine. Uh, it's probably just old oil that went through the turbo, through the everything, the intercooler and back into the intake and it'll probably build up there again, but uh, I'd already disturbed it. So, you know, the stuff that kind of grows over time is probably gonna stay where it grows, but once you start disturbing it, you're probably loosening it right up. So anyways, 
that's clean now. Um, while I was at it, I uh, degreased and cleaned up the, the front plate and I used that uh, Scotch Lock bristle disc, take the uh, RTV off this. So this is ready to go on the front. Uh, well, I'll have to swap out this uh, oil seal, which is, uh, I, I'm hoping it's not supposed to be an oil seal because there's, there's no flexibility to it whatsoever. I that or the center of it's long since left this earth. But yeah, I got I got a new one, so I don't really care. Um, I was gonna replace it anyway. So we're gonna start here. We're gonna start with uh, the motor mount. I only know, unfortunately, this motor mount could go either here or here. But fortunately, I still have my old block, and I know that it goes here uh, by looking at the witness marks. Those are it. It's really helpful to have something like that to look at. Uh, I found a bolt for right here. This is the snapped off bolt that I removed from the power steering bracket. And it's not, it's not, it's like five centimeters short of the other one, but it's the only one I could get a hold of. And it obviously it ran like that for question mark number of years. So I'm gonna put it in, use some Loctite. I'm just not gonna feed it the corn and she should be right. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put that on, put these in, put all these three plugs in. Those had to come out of the other engine and get cleaned up. So yeah, I'm gonna put it in fast mode in, put all those on, and then uh, the piece de resistance will be the uh, intake and exhaust manifolds going on, and we'll see how much uh, steam I have after that. All right, we're just about ready to put on the uh, intake exhaust manifold, and uh, I want to make a correction for something I said earlier. I was like, oh, Eurospare, I ordered Proline. Well, this was all wrapped up on the end, and when I flipped it over, it says Proline on it. So I I think Proline is not a brand so much as like a reseller they're using or whatever. I know it does say Rovers North, so I think that's their like house brand of like good enough parts. So in any case, I, I believe that's where I got my misconception anyways so um we'll get this on there and hopefully it lines up reasonably close to reasonably well and come on there we go uh oh does it matter i don't think it matters okay Ooh, lovely I also did, I think it was like 125 pounds, which is like a couple hundred bucks, pay to get this head performance gas flowed because it was an option, I thought. And it doesn't look any different than my other head. Maybe they did some some kajiggery down inside, but I, I thought that meant that these would be, you know, a little bit ported and polished or whatnot. I don't know. Maybe I didn't order it. I can't remember, it was three years ago. Maybe there's something other kajiggery they do that calls performance gas flow, but eh, whatever. Just something. So, alrighty. You won't, you'll see me uh, impact a lot of this stuff on and walk away. I'm gonna go back with a, uh, I've got a whole list and a torque wrench, but that's gonna be a pain in the ass to watch and film, and I will do that later. I also don't have this thing set on like kill it to death mode. I have it set on like medium, which is not particularly tight. So, um, just so if you're watching me and, and, and uh, you're saying, oh, this guy isn't torque, torque, I torque what needs to be torqued. I mean, granted, you know, some of this stuff like this mount, some of these things, I'm not gonna go back and check the torque on them. It's fine. And the other thing is, is torque's not some magical calculated number. I mean, you can look up any fastener and basically find what should be reasonably close to the correct torque for it, so. Um. Hmm. So, I don't know. The heads of these go up against there and I can tell that that's how they were before because of what I have in my bag and, and a few other things. And uh, that's supposed to seal it. I'm gonna just put a little thread locker on the head of the bolt. Hopefully that helps seal it. The other reason to use thread locker though is because if you've got a thread lockered bolt, typically moisture can't get up in there and start rusting, corrode the two together. So it, it does a number of things for you, not just keep the thread from backing out. So, just put a little lock there. Yeah. 
now I need the 10 millimeter again. This thing uses 10 millimeters like you would not believe. So if you're one of those people that lost your 10 millimeter socket, if you're gonna start working on one of these, well, yeah, go buy like a half a dozen or something, I guess. I don't know, buy them in bulk. Now that I started putting that on, let me just be smart about this and make sure that I can sneak. Oh, yeah, I can actually, but that one would be impossible to get and that, that and that would be hard to get. Okay. I got a little paranoid about order of operations because on the other side, I don't know if you guys noticed, I'd take a bunch of stuff off, put a bunch of stuff on, take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on. And they like to kind of interweave things in ways that don't make sense. Also, uh, just so you know, I did take that Scotch-Brite material and really, uh, really went over all these surfaces nicely. I checked them with a the straight edge, they look pretty true. Um, the gasket should be able to handle that. Um, I know you're supposed to decoke these once in a while, I'm looking in this one and it just, it's just not carboned up. So um, uh, that's, that's, that's how we're gonna leave it. So, all right, I'm gonna go back to fast mode. I think I'll be pretty happy today if I get this on and then I'm gonna try to get this mounted up. Once this is mounted, then I can take the top off, put the new um, thermostat in it. I have a new one of these. I think this one works though. I'll try it. I have a new one if I need it anyways. So, um, yeah, oh, that's, that's awfully odd. You have this nice flange to help the hose grip and it's like ground off on both sides. And that's, it's, it's clearly a factory thing, but, oh, well, you know, they put the new guy on the belt sander that day and that's, that's what he thought looked pretty. So anyways, all right, that's gonna be the plan, and uh, that'll be it for, well, I say today. It Today is my today, not your today, not this video. I don't know what I'm gonna get to by the end of the week. I haven't touched the timing chest because I forgot to get a uh, the tensioner pulley. I thought I had ordered one, I didn't. I still have the one I took out, which isn't very old, but eh, eh, do you reuse it? I don't know, it's not an expensive part. I'm gonna just order it. The, the answer is no, you don't reuse it. Um, so anyways, I wanna get that on, all bolted up nicely. Um, and then I wanna get the, uh, and then if, if I get that on the front cover on, if I'm still feeling like I got something going on, uh, I'm not gonna put in the, uh, the dipstick tube till, till it's inside the vehicle because I don't actually know how it's supposed to mount the one on mine goes all the way around, kind of just wiggles around in there. Probably leaks a lot of oil too, or did. Not that that was my major problem. I had, I had other major problems. So in any case, uh, yeah, so that's the plan. But then after that, I'll start, I'll put the, uh, I don't know if this is the, uh, I don't know what you'd call this. Cause I, I think this might be the rear main seal of the engine, but it doesn't feel like a rear main seal. It's, uh, it's just an extra seal anyways. Uh, one thing, this really screwed with me in the beginning. On the bottom of this, if you're underneath it, you'll see this hole with no hole, with no thread in it, and it's, uh, you can see right through it. There's one on the front of the timing chest as well. What these are for is waiting plugs. So when you have gone down the muddy, nasty trail and you get to the point where you gotta afford a stream, what Land Rover fully expects you to do is get underneath your vehicle and insert your waiting plugs. And then when you're done waiting, pull them out. Now, you, ask, you might ask like, why wouldn't they just seal that? Well, you wouldn't want it sealed because you do want, you know, whatever gets in here to be able to get out of there, especially in the front. I'm sure there will be oil coming out of the front of the engine going out the hole. You also don't want to pressurize it because that can blow out seals. So their thought was, like, we'll let it drain, we can let it drain, and we'll plug it up, and we can plug it up, and, uh, you know, we'll let somebody else worry about the details. So, anyhow, I'm going to get back into fast mode. We're going to whoop, and it'll be done. Unless it's not. But it will be. Unless it's not. 
All right, guys, this is about where I'm gonna wrap it up this week. Uh, off camera, I did assemble the whole turbo uh, because I didn't know what I was doing and I had to take it apart, put it together, take it apart, put it together. And uh, I wanted to be confident on some stuff that just looks wrong. Um, like this, this hose here, right? Genuine Land Rover brand hose. And there's this like extra length to it. So it's kind of like squished in there real hard. And uh, as far as I can tell, any pictures I've seen have the same sort of kink to it. This is the fitting that failed me. And I wonder like, you know, the fact that there's constant pressure and vibration on it can't help that stay tightened. And then this hose, every picture I've seen of it shows it like wackily wandering around here and then going up. And there's just a ton of tension on these. Um, if anybody knows what they're talking about, sees that these are somehow the wrong part number and there's a, a better part to use this, like, let me know. I'm, I'm interested. Um, I thought, you know, I, I looked these parts up in the, in the parts guide for this particular year and all that other junk. Um, you know, I looked at my old block. These things te are, look like they're in exactly the same place. So it's not like uh, they move some ports around. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure this will work just fine. I'll definitely be keeping a, a good eye on this. And uh, again, I'm putting a mechanical oil pressure gauge. So if I do have problems here, it should be pretty obvious. Um, I did replace the center housing rotating assembly. That's this bit here, uh, just because the housings are really where the money is on these. Um, whereas the CHRA is like 300 bucks, the whole turbo is like 1500 bucks. So I did not want to replace that. I do feel like the, uh, the shaft play, it had a little bit of shaft play right out of the box, which I, I don't know that I, I don't know. I don't know what it's supposed to be. So anyways, uh, that's where we're going to end off this week. You know, realistically, this side of the engine is, is pretty well done. Oh, pull that little guy out of there. Um... I'm not going to put the dipstick on until it's in the car because I think that'll catch on everything and it's nicely plugged off right now so no, no, no garbage is going to get in that hole. Um, so, oh yeah, and I did put this on. I got I to tighten those while I think of it because uh, if, if I put a little forma gasket on these things or, or RTV, what I like to do is tighten them up, you know, snug, let it sit 24 hours and tighten it the rest of the way. I've, I've never had it leak that way and I did actually put I basically put the gasket in dry, but I put a little film of RTV on each mating surface. And for my money, that's the way to do it. It, it seems to work for me. So, so that's pretty good there. Um, I got to get that timing belt tensioner ordered um, and a couple. Uh, oh, yeah. And the adapter so I can actually install my oil pressure gauge. But uh, next week. Uh, it's going to be the, the whole bell housing and transmission assembly going together. Um, I think if I play my cards right and, you know, put a few hours in this week after work, um, I think I can get to the point where, uh, you know, I might put the engine in this week. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I want to say I'll put it in and get it started, but that's, that's an awful lot to ask. Um, so I think as long as I get this this the flywheel i cleaned that up already i got the other flywheel over there i i degreased it again with that super clean stuff uh the more i use that the more i like it i got a brass brush for the scrubbing made a big difference so um yeah and then get the uh transmission transfer case all that bolted on up um and oh yeah i gotta also stuff the uh the fuel tank, it's conspicuous in its absence. It goes right up there. Um, so we'll get all that stuff uh, plugged on in there. And we'll see how close we get to getting it running. I don't know. I might get pretty motivated, though, if uh, if things are going good. Uh, I don't know. So anyways, uh, you know, I hope you've enjoyed watching me struggle at pretending I'm a mechanic that knows what he's doing. Um, There'll also probably be a video coming on doing an alternator in a Cat 302.5 mini excavator because my friend got one and it needs an alternator. And a whole bunch of other fun little problems with it. So um, I might bring that as like a weekly one shot. Uh, unfortunately, when I did all of the fun troubleshooting, it was a rabbit hole situation. And I thought that it was going to be quick in and out, five minute job and... 
Well, after four hours, we had everything working again. It's a funny story. I'll tell you when we got the machine in the background. I think you guys will enjoy it. Um, that's really it for this week. If you're, uh, you know, if you're watching it and you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, really subscribe. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing that as hard as I can, which is, uh, you know, this is as hard as I can. So anyways, uh, have a great week. That's, that's it. I ran out of words. Bye.